Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's debate. My name is Isha Jane, and I'm the chairman, and Isaac Jacobs is the timekeeper. The adjudicator is Mr. Hazel. The topic for tonight's debate is that Mac Gordon's protest should be awarded. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Glenonga International High School, and the negative team seated to my left is from St. John's Grammar School. The speaking time for this debate is four minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time. And a double bell will sound at the speaking time. A continuous spell may be rung 30 seconds after the speaking time, in which case the speaker must sit down immediately. Please ensure that your mobile phones and other electronic devices are switched off. I declare this debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker, Sienna Mason. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that Mac Horton's protest should be lauded. We define this as Mac Horton being an Australian swimmer protesting against Sun Yang destroying evidence, lauded meaning praised and appreciated, and FINA, the water sports administrator not taking action when necessary. Therefore, meaning Mac Horton should be praised for protesting against the disgraceful actions of Sun Yang. Tonight, I will explain to you how Horton is not just right to protest, but should be applauded as Sun Yang and his team destroyed the evidence that was used to investigate him. This is despicable, and as you will hear in my second argument, Horton's protest has raised awareness and given insight to the lack of action taken by FINA. Which leads into our second speaker's arguments. As FINA isn't taking proper, justful action, competitors must stand up for themselves. Her second point is that Horton's protest wasn't just insightful, courageous and valiant, but morally correct. And because of this, we must acknowledge the courage of Horton and laud him for representing a clean sport. To my first point, Sun Yang destroyed the vials of blood which were to be tested for evidence of prohibited substance use. We cannot ignore how significant of an issue this is. Destroying or tampering with evidence is a crime that can face 20 years in prison. Yet Sun Yang has been allowed to walk free and compete in international sport. This is despicable and the lack of action taken by FINA is atrocious. We are not saying that Sun Yang was guilty or that he's innocent, but we are saying that destroying evidence is a crime that cannot be taken lightly. This is the basis of Horton protesting, and because of him standing up and taking action against the lack thereof by FINA, we must applaud him. FINA has taken no action against Sun Yang and his team, whereas WADA, the World Anti-Doping Association, is saying they were furious with the lack of action taken by FINA and are considering banning Sun for destroying evidence and not being able to provide a blood sample. The anti-doping code for both FINA and WADA states that tampering with any part of doping control is an anti-doping rule violation and should lead to sanctions. Without Horton protesting, Sun would have never been properly investigated. And whether Sun wasn't or was using performance enhancing drugs, the outrage is over the fact that he destroyed evidence and that FINA made no subsequent investigations, taking the easy way out. This is why we must congratulate Horton for his protest. My second argument is that Matt Horton's protest had raised awareness about the wrongdoings of players and officials in international sport. Due to Horton protesting, we are now enlightened on the, the, the deplorable efforts made by FINA to investigate their competitors. After a failed attempt to test whether Soon was guilty or innocent, FINA made no follow-up investigations or inquiries. They took the easy route and simply dismissed it as easily as possible. But thanks to Horton's protest, thanks to him taking action, this issue has been raised and something is finally being done to make swimming a clean sport. The importance of what Horton has done is not just standing up for what he believes in, but for raising awareness about the other competitors wanting a fair competition on an equal playing field. Upon returning to the competitors' village, Horton was given a standing ovation for his protest. Teammate Mitch Larkin said that 99% of all people at the event support what he does and that they are all fighting for a clean sport. Never have we been given a better insight as to how severe this issue is. A standing ovation by the competitors signifies the importance of the issue. These are the people living and breathing the sport and they are saying action needs to be taken. We are not saying that because the competitors believe something, you should. 
We are saying that Horton's protest and the standing ovation he was given raises awareness and shows about how severe this issue is. The issue of destroying evidence may not seem important, but because of Horton's protests, we have realised how these corrupt misdoings are too commonplace and must be stopped. For this, we must thank Mac Horton. So, in conclusion, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we, the affirmative team, strongly believe that Mac Horton's protest should be lauded by everyone. Sun Yang destroying evidence is a crime that cannot be ignored, and Mac's protest raises awareness of drug use in professional sports. Furthermore, a standing ovation highlights the significance of the issue for all athletes. As you can see, Mac Horton's protest should most definitely be lauded. A pat on the back for Mac. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alice and I am the first speaker for the negative team. The topic for our debate is the Mac Horton's protest should be lauded. We strongly disagree with this statement. We agree with the definition given by the positive team. I would now like to rebut the arguments given by the first speaker of the positive team. The first speaker of the positive team tried to tell you that FINA is not doing its job. This argument is incorrect because Australian swimmer Shane Jack was not allowed to attend the World Championships due to her positive test sample. If FINA was not doing its job, Shane Jack would not have been sent home. FINA has also con conducted post-race tests and Sun Yang was unable to comment to the New York Times due to a post-race test that he had to attend. FINA are doing, doing their job by convicting athletes who are found not to be clean of drugs and making athletes have post-race tests, so Macron's protests cannot be justified through this argument. I will be talking about why Macron's actions should not be lauded, that in fact, Macron displayed a regrettable lack of sportsmanship. As you will see, Mac's protest was a result of the history of intense personal rivalry between the two swimmers spilling over onto the metal dais. Our second speaker, Ebony, will talk to you about how it is not Mac Horton's responsibility to decide if Sun Yang should be allowed to swim, as he is a swimmer, not a judge or jury. She will also talk to you about Sun Yang's innocence. Our third speaker, Abby, will rebut the positive team's points and summarise our team's case. Now to my first point. Horton and Sun have a history of rivalry that goes back years, filled with many feuds, some of them for petty reasons. For example, Sun splashing water in Horton's face after a race in 2017. Horton appears to have confused his personal feelings about losing to his bitter rival with the larger problem of drugs in sport. His protest in 2019 should be compared to his actions in 2016. When Horton won against Sun in the 2016 Rio Olympics, he had no problem standing on a podium with a swimmer who he now claims is a drug cheat. And despite Sun's disappointment in losing to his rival, Sun Yang stood proud on the podium with his silver medal. Three years later, the positions are reversed and Matt Horton refused to stand on the podium. I don't have time for drug cheats, were his exact words. Well, he had time for them when he was the winner, so now it appears he is just making excuses for not winning. Fina has cleared Sun Yang to be back in the water and racing. This looks like a case of a jealous swimmer who has just lost an important race to his rival, allowing his personal feelings to impact his responsibilities as a representative of the Australian swim team. Matt's protest should not be lauded as it does not make Sun Yang guilty by protesting against his past mistakes. Now to my second point, about bad sportsmanship. Mac Horton showed appalling sportsmanship. The International Swimming Federation, FINA, made strong comments about the in incident. According to SBS, FINA said, while FINA respects the principle of freedom of speech, it has to be conducted in the right context. Mac Horton's actions, that is, interrupting a world championship medal ceremony, is certainly not the right context where a high degree of sportsmanship is expected. Sun Yang said, You can have an opinion against me, but during the awards ceremony, it's a sacred time when every player represents their own country. 
Matt Port is representing Australia, not just himself, and he has a responsibility to represent his team and his country. He should be a good sport and accept that he did not win this time. Matt Port has demanded that FINA take a stronger line with drug cheats. This is a worthy position, and it would be understandable if there was any evidence that they weren't. However, at the same competition, Australian swimmer Shana Jack tested positive for doping and was sent home. According to the ABC, Australians have been called hypocrites, and Horton's response was, we are not hypocrites, we are enforcing what we stand for, and I think Australia is definitely standing for clean sport. This is true, Australia should continue to stand for clean sport, but it's not Matt Horton's role to disrupt awards ceremonies to make this point, especially when he risks looking like a bad loser. So in conclusion, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Horton's protest on the medal dais should not be lauded, as it was an inappropriate and he should have shown better sportsmanship. As a public figure representing Australia, uh, as a public figure representing Australia, as our second speaker will show, Sun Yang was allowed to swim by Fina, and his je jealous rival's protest does not change that. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for this evening's debate is that the Matt Horton protest should be lauded. As our first speaker has made undoubtedly clear, Matt Horton deserves the encouragement he unarguably got from his fellow swimmers and onlookers alike for his protest. Before I get any further, I will point out some obvious flaws in the opposition's arguments. First of all, the opposition has said that because the Australian swimmer Shane Jack was caught doping, Mac is hypocritical to protest. First off, saying someone is wrong just because they are hypocritical is a logical fallacy. Just because someone may be hypocritical, it doesn't make them wrong. Furthermore, the Australian swimmer was brought to justice and fairly tried, whereas Sun Yang wasn't. Continuing, according to our opposition, Mac Horton is a sore loser. We acknowledge that on, a fir on first instance, someone may see, uh, some may see Horton as a sore loser, but as we have said, Horton's protest raises awareness. Without Horton's protest, we never would have known about the corrupt misdoings within FINA and the competition. So instead of seeing Horton as a sore loser, understand what he has done and applaud him. Furthermore, Sun Yang destroyed the evidence and FINA did nothing about it. This has been proven. No retests or anything. They just let him compete. I will continue this with my arguments. To my first point, Horton was morally justified and correct to stand up for himself. Mac Horton, like many other swimmers, holds a brutal training regime. After four years of, of a carefully calculated training plan and 10 pool sessions a week, even the most oblivious would understand how frustrating it would be to stand under someone who had previously been con uh, convicted of consuming performance-enhancing drugs. It may not seem like a big deal, but in a global competition where even the slightest cheated second could determine your position, it would have meant the world to Horton. The worst part? Sun's illicit activities had been kept a complete secret. Sun had escaped breaking the law twice, one through consumption of drugs and the other through destruction of evidence with nothing more than a three-month ban, which, surprise, had also been kept a complete secret. Horton did what was appropriate given the conditions that he was in, and the act of refusing to stand on the podium was the act of him standing up for himself. He knew that he was risking his image, especially doing so in a competition as international as the Olympics, but he stood up for himself despite that. 
If that type of courage isn't enough to warrant praise, then our standards of what counts as praiseworthy are surely misplaced. That brings me to my second point. Matt Corton's protest raised another alarming issue. The lack of action that official organisations take during these behind-the-scenes fiascos, namely Federation International de Natation, or FINA. FINA is an organisation recognised by the International Olympic Committee for administrating international competitions in water sports. Administrating, for those who may not have realised, also includes making sure that the games are carried out fairly, with no advantage given to any single competitor. While they may have subjected Sun to a three-month ban back in 2014, it was a leaked FINA record showing that Sun had smashed his test samples that brought back the controversy. FINA had not only hit these records, but allowed Sun to continue participating in the competitions. When Horton finally raised the issue, however, they defended Sun, going as far as to write an official warning to Horton. Apparently, a silent protest is worth a warning, yet the destruction of evidence isn't. Due to Horton's protest, however, the World Anti-Doping Agency appealed this to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, or CAS. It is currently under review. If officials like FINA refuse to take action, then the competitors have no choice but to take action themselves. You simply cannot tell me, ladies and gentlemen, that this act does not deserve to be lauded. In conclusion, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the Matt Horton protest deserves a standing ovation it got from fellow competitors. It deserves the support it got from Swimming Australia and the World Anti-Doping Agency, and it sure as hell deserves to be lauded by onlookers like us, who can do nothing but judge from a distance, as Horton sacrifices his image to stand up for himself, clean sports, and all the athletes who haven't found the courage to speak up against the obvious flaws in the professional sporting competition. We hope that it is now clear that Horton should be loaded. A pat on the back for Matt. Thank you. second negative speaker, Evan Evening. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ebony Vink and I'm the negative team's second speaker for this evening. The topic for this debate is whether Mac Horton's protest should be lauded. We, as the negative team, believe this action should not be lauded. As second speaker, I will rebut some of the points made by the affirmative team before summarising our first speaker's case and then presenting my points. I will now point out some errors in the positive team's arguments. The opposition has tried to tell you that Matt Horton is spreading awareness. Yes, this is the case and it is fine, but it is inappropriate to do at a sacred medal ceremony. After the incident, the official warning Mac received stated that while FINA respects the principle, the principle of freedom of speech, it has 
to be conducted in the right context. As in all major sports organizations, our athletes are aware of their responsibilities to respect FINA regulations and not use FINA events to make personal statements or gestures. The problem with Max's protest was not what he did, but how and where he protested. Our first speaker, Alice, has told you how Max's competitive rivalry with Sun may have affected his decision. She spoke about the history between the two swimmers, both in and out of the pool. She stated that Mr. Horton's display only just looked look like a lack of sportsmanship, which is frowned upon, not only in Australia, but also in a majority of other countries. Tonight, I am going to be outlining that Sung Yang has been declared innocent to recent drug testing, therefore Matt Horton would have no reason to protest against him, and that it is also not Matt's role to retaliate. My first point is the fact that Sun Yang has been declared innocent. In 2014, Sun was charged with the use of a banned substance before a competition and was given three months of suspension. Although this is the case, he served this suspension without violating any of the restrictions. According to Tracy Holmes on the ABC, Mr Yang was declared innocent of any 2018 charges on a FINA doping panel report. They found that Mr Sun Yang has not committed, committed an anti-doping rule violation. This report was appealed on January 3rd by the World Anti-Doping Agency, but, Yang, but, but despite, despite drug cheat headlines, Sun may still be found innocent. This fact is now lost in the melodrama of Mr. Horn's dramatic gesture. My second point is that this is not, it's not Mac's role to retaliate. Even Sun Yang's biggest critics are ashamed of Mr. Horn's decision at Rio, even suggesting he should be punished for, an un for his unsportsmanlike behaviour. The former boss of the Australian Sports Anti-Doping Authority, Richard Ings, posted it on this on Twitter. I'm no fan of Sun Yang, but he has served his suspension for a doping violation. He has been cleared by a FINA panel for refusing to provide a sample. He is innocent until proven guilty. Not standing on the Mac not standing on the podium with him should attract a hefty penalty. While Mac is entitled to his own opinion, he is firstly a representative of the Australian swimming team. He does not have the right to make this decision to disrupt an award ceremony. It looks personal considering the rivalry between the two champions. In the advertiser, Mr. Hun has claimed that his snubbed son on behalf of the citizens across the globe as well as himself. If this is true, then it shows a serious lack of judgment. As I have shown, an independent investigation has found that Sun Yang hasn't failed a drug test. The anti-doping system has failed him. At the time of Mr. Horton's protest on behalf of the citizens across the globe, Sun had been cleared of any violations. In conclusion, Madam Chairman, Timekeeper, ladies and gentlemen, Mac Horton's protest should not be lauded as FINA has cleared Sun Yang to swim. Sun was innocent at the time of the race and could be still cleared of any wrongdoing. Mac Horton has set a bad example for the generations of swimmers and athletes to come. Thank you.
I call upon the third affirmative speaker, Mark Jones. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is whether Matt Horton's protest should be lauded. And, as my affirmative team has already made it distinctively clear, Matt Horton's protest should be lauded. And I would like to restate our definition, with the word lauded being defined as praised. And firstly, I would like to point out some flaws in the opposition's argument. The first speaker has talked to you about how it's hypocritical for Matt Norton to protest against Sun Yang. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, the topic for this debate is whether Matt Horton should be lauded, not whether he was right or wrong. There, though there isn't sufficient evidence right now to determine the result, Mr. Horton's actions were simply questioning the truth and supporting clean sport. Matt Horton deserves to be praised for speaking out alone because he knew the consequences for his actions. But regardless, he continued to voice his opinion for the betterment of swimming as a sport. He did not just voice his opinion. He voiced it in front of live audience of millions of people. And if that crowd himself isn't worth being lauded, society's expectations of praise have been misplaced. The first speaker also told you about how Matt Horton is not the one to judge. You're right, but he isn't judging. He's raising awareness for clean sport, and that in itself should be lauded. The first speaker has also told you about how Matt Horton is a sore loser. Matt Horton's golden career makes him one of the most respectable sportsmen who has competed in various competitions in a clean and friendly manner. This is the first time Matt has refused to stand up on the podium, despite the fact that he has lost to other athletes in the past. Therefore, Horton is not a sore loser. In fact, he is a person standing up for clean sport, as he had in the past and will in the future. The first speaker also talked to you about how, bad Nor how Mac Norton is a very poor sportsman. Would it be true if only Sun Yang did not smash his blood bounds before the competition? And Sun Yang did. That's the truth. Making, giving Matt Horton every reason to question Sun Yang's, Sun, Sun, whether Sun Yang is on drugs. The second speaker has told, told you about how, Sun, uh, how Matt Horton is interrupting a very sacred medal ceremony. However, that does not change the fact that Sun Yang is, could, be, could be guilty of cheating of, with drugs. His boldness to express his opinion and raise awareness makes him more, even more praiseworthy. Also, competitions aren't places to make personal statements. The opposition has stated these competitions aren't places to make personal statements. First of all, Horton's protests could hardly be counted as personal. You can't say that someone who founded a murder and was reporting it making a personal statement. They also said how Sun Yang did not cheat. Whether Sun Yang cheated or not is not the concern of this debate. This discussion is focused on whether Horton should be lauded, not whether he's correct or not, as I previously stated. Horton didn't just sacrifice his reputation, he sacrificed his career as an athlete in pursuit of the truth. Horton is not doing this to insult China or for any other person again. He is truly doing this to answer his suspicion and support the clean sport. This action will not only bring awareness to incidents such as this, but will benefit swimming as a sport in the future. And this protest is most certainly worthy, worthy of being lauded. So in conclusion, our affirmative team have explained the rationality of Horton's actions. Our first speaker, Sienna, has clearly highlighted how Sun Yang had destroyed significant evidence and how Matt Horton's protest raised collective awareness against his wrongdoings. Our second speaker, Pree, discussed the moral justifications of Horton's actions and how obviously, how obviously lack of action taken by sporting officials is the only reason for such protests to occur. And it is therefore evident that Matt Horton's protest should most certainly be acclaimed. A pat on the back for Matt.
on the third negative speaker, Abby Kennedy. Good evening, Chairman, Timekeeper, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Abby and I'm the third speaker for the negative team. The topic for this debate is that Matt Corton's protest should be lauded. We, the negative team, believe this statement to be false. As the third speaker, I'll be rebutting the affirmative team and summarising my team's case. Now, let's take a closer look at the flaws in the positive team's argument. An argument presented by the affirmative team is that Sun Yang should not go unpunished when he destroyed a sample of his blood. Richard Eames, former boss of the Australian Sports Anti-Doping Authority, posted this statement. In cases I have been involved in, athletes have tipped out their urine sample. If a sample was not connect collected, then the athlete has to explain the circumstances. If the circumstances of non-compliance by testers is compelling, then the charge of refusal is dismissed. Mr Eames also said that in the Sun Yang case, he had every right to refuse to provide a sample because of systematic failures by the testers involved. Sun Yang's case is still open with another investigation occurring this month. As you can see, there are arguments for both sides and it is too early to say with certainty that he should not be punished for this. They also talk to you about inaction by FINA. FINA is still policing drug users as, as the Shana Jack case proves and post-race drug tests are also making sure that athletes are clean from drugs. So FINA is obviously doing its job. The first affirmative speaker also spoke about awareness for the corrupt governing bodies, especially FINA. While this investigation into, the Sun, into Sun Yang destroying the sample was not due to Horton's protest, it was because they wanted to make sure of the claims. Richard Eames, former boss of Asada, as I have said before and quoted, said that in Sun's case, he had every right to refuse to provide a sample due to the failures by the testers involved. The positive team would have you believe that support for Mac from other athletes makes his position right. Yes, other athletes have supported Mac's stance and supposedly clapped when he returned to the athletes' village, but the athletes that have been outspoken are from countries such as Australia, the United States and Great Britain that have tight anti-doping rules. Athletes from countries like China, Russia and Germany are not as supportive of Mac's stance, according to the ABC. Athletes are frustrated by the differences in doping systems, and so apparent inaction from international bodies, such as FINA, has caused tension between athletes from different countries. Also, according to the ABC, swimmers from countries with robust anti-doping programs feel that other teams are not being held to the same level of accountability, hence the Horton Sun affair. Those outspoken athletes are not lauding Max protests against Sun, but Max protests against governing anti-doping bodies. I would once again like to point out that Mac is fine to raise awareness and protest, but not in the context that he did, at a World Championships medal ceremony. I will now summarise my team, the negative team's case. My first speaker, Alice, introduced you to our team's case before discussing the rivalry Mac Horton and Sun Yang had in and out of the pool and the potential jealousy Mac may have been feeling. She then went on to speak about the lack of sportsmanship on Mac's behalf with the protest. Ebony, my second speaker, spoke about how Sun Yang has been declared innocent for all other charges besides his first one of using a banned substance, for which he served a three-month ban for over five years ago. Ebony also presented the argument that it was not Mac's call to make and by making the protest has made a bad example for sports people to come. So, in conclusion, Chairman, Timekeeper, ladies and gentlemen, we the negative team strongly believe that Matt Horton's protest should under no circumstances be lauded due to the arguments my team and myself have presented. Thank you. attend the grand finals which will be held in the House of Assembly cha Chamber 
Parliament House on the, on Saturday the 21st of September 2019. There is no need to RSVP. The topic and site information for the semi-finals will be available on the Debating Essay website tomorrow morning. Please be sure to check your site and debate time information carefully. Debates will be held here at the same venue next week. Necessarily. 
So maybe if you could try and, before we go into sort of stuff like that, um, if we can try and characterize, the, sort of understand why uh, Horton was protesting. So was he protesting against FINA or Sun Yan? Because if he's protesting against FINA, then you can say, well, his protest was out of order. He shouldn't be lauded because FINA actually are doing enough to, to do it. And we can see this in the case of Shana Jack. But if we start, if we go off with this, we don't really sort of tell us why he's protesting. It's a bit hard to differentiate between uh, protesting and sort of, you know, Shana Jack scenario and Sun Yan scenario if that makes sense. Um, so that was, is, a, is a way we could have done it, and I think you, you had a pretty good idea, we just didn't quite get it on point, but that's okay. Um, I think it is an interesting point that you raised about Horton's sort of personal uh, sort of rivalry with, with Sun Yang. That's good, and, but it's a really good point about the sportsmanship idea. I think if we could try and get on that a bit more, that would be really good, because if we can try and characterize, if we did characterize Horton's process against Sun Yang, we could say, well, he's going against that because Sun Yen's uh, drug che cheating was, was sort of, that wasn't sportsmanship. That was, that was going against the idea of sportsmanship. You could say, well, now Horton is using sort of unsportsmanly conduct to try and show the world that sportsmanship is important. So he's actually undermining his own case. So you can say, well, that, you know, that's the way you can sort of go about it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an interesting way of looking at sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that's you know, a pretty good point that you raised. Generally quite a good speech, so well done. Going to the second affirmative, current free. Um, yeah, I like the, your rebuttal about the, hypocr uh, so the, the, the hypocrisy associated with it. It was good because just because it could be hypocritical doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, and that was, it was good that you got that really uh, clear. Um, no, what about this? Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I, sort of, I still hear a bit, uh, sort of not quite too sure as to, to the, the reason behind Horton's protest. So I think um, it would have been nice, especially after hearing um, the, the, the first negative sort of speak, a bit about sort of FINA's actions, if we can try and bring the, 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 um, the debate maybe into a sort of way of saying, well, no, maybe Sun Yang, uh, maybe Horton's protest wasn't against FINA, it was against Sun Yang personally, or if it was against FINA, because it, that, it made it a lot easier just for me to follow which way we're going about it. Um, but I think you had some, uh, I think in, in your speech, though, I think you, you timed your speech quite well with your first speaker, and that's good to see, because the second speaker, it's really important that we time in between first and last. Um, so it's good to see. So it's a, it was generally quite a good speech. Going to the second negative, Ebony. Um, yeah, it's good that you conceded the fact that um, that Horton's protest may have been effective, but it wasn't his role. Um, so that was that was very good because after all, we're looking at whether Horton should be lauded or not, or, or not whether sort of it was effective. So there's a, there's a subtle difference in that, and I think you sort of picked up on that, and that was good to see. Um, I think that's a really good argument in your speech, but I think sometimes it's we got a bit sidetracked with this whole idea of Sun Yang. Sort of, so I think it's easy to do, but we need to make sure that we remember what the topic is itself. So the topic itself was whether Horton should be, or Horton's protest should be lauded. Um, and I think we went into a bit too much detail as to whether the basis for this protest was a, was a good basis or not, not whether the protest itself was good or not. Does that make sense? So we went into saying, oh, well, you know, Sun Yang did this, he did this, he did that. And that's good, and that's sort of explaining the circumstances that gave rise to the protest. We need to make sure that the debate itself is about the protest itself. Um, so, so it's easy to get sidetracked, but just remember to try and focus on that, that topic. Um, but I think you had some really good sort of groundwork, you had some good basic points. Um, and I think if we just work on remembering the topic itself, it'd, really, it'd be really good uh, you know, for, for the debating. So it was a good speech. Going to the third affirmative, Mark. Um, yeah, the first point I've written here is that I'm not too sure why you redefine or try to redefine the word "lord" or "lord up again." But I quickly, I got what you're getting at after that, and that was good to see. Um, and I think that's a very, it's a very good point. Because as I just mentioned, I think we did get a bit sidetracked. And it's good to see that you, as a third speaker, sort of bring it back to, to the to the debate topic. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, again, I've sort of written under here for the battery about the sportsmanship. And this is more so just me thinking to myself and thinking whether sportsmanship, his conduct was actually uh, sort of a good display of sportsmanship. That, sort of, that, that was fine for you to bring up in the way you did it. Um, but I think the outstanding point that we didn't quite get to was maybe whether it was his role uh, to do it. So I think it's, it's good that you, at the start, you spoke about the difference between um, you know, what he did in the circumstance that, you know, that, 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 that it brought, that, that sort of brought it uh, to attention. But I think we really need to focus on whether it was his role to protest in such a way, you know, to, to, bring, out, to, to bring out that sort of, that, what is his disagreement, I guess, with it. Um, so I think that was just the one outstanding point, but I think Germany is an overall sort of strong and, and you know, enthusiastic sort of rebuttal. I think that's really good. It's just that one little point, and I think it was just outstanding. But besides that, very good. Um, going to the third negative, Abby. Um, yeah, you had, a, you had a good manner of speaking. I like the way you, you guided me through sort of your speech. Because sometimes you can get really caught up in sort of going quickly and making time and just getting all that points out. But I think it's, it's sort of a, a more of a natural delivery in the, in the sense that you guided me through the speech. And that was really nice. I think what we need to do is, and sort of like I, I mentioned um, before, is that we need to try and sort of look at more, more so focusing on Holton's actions and whether they in themselves were praiseworthy, not whether the circumstance that gave rise to it.